Hello and welcome to this webinar on managing media assets in Drupal 8. I'll be presenting this webinar. My name is Ivan Zujek. I've been using Drupal for about 10 years and in that time um, I've been a Drupal developer, also a tech lead, a Drupal consultant, even dabbled in a bit of front end back in the day when it was just really jQuery and none of these you know, 10,000 frameworks to play around with. Um, by day, I'm a Drupal uh, consultant, and by night, I write a lot of content about Drupal over at webwash.net. So if you want to learn more about Drupal 7, because believe it or not, Drupal 7 is still uh, used, and Drupal 8, head over to webwash.net. But today, we are all here to learn about media management. So this is the agenda for this webinar. The first two points, so media management in Drupal 7 and what's new in Drupal 8, will cover um, the, current eco, the current media ecosystem in Drupal 7 and then we'll look at uh, what's new in Drupal 8. And the last three points will be part of a bigger demonstration. And I'll show you how to use three of, of the new modules that are available for media in Drupal 8. So first, let's start off and have a chat about the current media landscape in Drupal 7. So when you install Drupal 7 out of the box, what type of media functionality do you get? Well, you don't get much. You don't even get an editor and there's no media management out of the box other than copy pasting HTML uh, and HTML image tag and that's about it. But that's all right because you know, Drupal 7 was released when? 2011, and Drupal's always touted itself as, as a modular, um, having a modular architecture. So core will be small, and then contrib will come to the rescue. So then you have this thing where it's have no fear, contrib is here. And so that means people will develop contribution modules that add extra functionality. And so in Drupal 7, the most, the most popular module by far to handle media is, of course, the media module. And, and the reason for this is because when you really search for media in Drupal, the first result is often the media module. And also, just a side note, if you are ever going to develop a Drupal module, I heard this great quote where somebody said, the usability of a module starts with the name. So media module has become popular because it offers media functionality, but also it's called media module. And so media module offered decent functionality, but it was a bit buggy with WYSIWYG editors. And what I mean by that is you can implement, let's just say CK editor, which is the editor now in Drupal 8. You can implement that in Drupal 7 in two ways, using WYSIWYG API or using CK editor module. And I had issues in the past where when you're trying to embed assets, you'll get a bug if, if you set up CK Editor using WYSIWYG API, or you'll get another bug when, you were, when uh, you were using CK Editor module. But other than that, it was a, it's a pretty decent solution. And uh, distributions such as Panoply use it. Okay? Then you have this other module called Scaled. And this is my example of... Um, naming your modules correctly. Now, Scald offered a complete new take on managing media in Drupal 7. And it relied on the CK Editor module, and so you had to use CK Editor. And it had great functionality where you, where you could click and drag atoms, which was their definition of an entity, over into, into the editor. And it worked pretty well. And... Uh, Unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to use it in a big Drupal 7 project, but when I talked to people, they highly recommended it. <clears throat> and then you have the IMCE module. Now, this module isn't really a full-blown um, media module. It's basically just an image and file uploader that lets you browse folders within the Drupal files directory. But it is, it is, very, it is very powerful. So... If you want to give your editors the ability to upload images or any files into the Drupal's files directory, give them 
this module. And the thing is though, it's been around since 2006. It's got over 400,000 installs and you know what? There's a Drupal, there is a stable Drupal 8 version, believe it or not. So it works and honestly, I've had the least amount of problems with, with this. If you know its limitations, then um, it's a perfect solution. So that's kind of a wrap up of the current state in Drupal 7. I do know there's probably other modules which I probably skipped over, but these are the three, the three big ones that I've had, that I've had experience with. <clears throat> so what's new in Drupal 8? So the media, so media handling in Drupal 8 has been re-architected um, into smaller components. A lot of the maintainers of, say, Media Module and Scald and a few other people got together and said, okay, let's not have these separate modules like we do in Drupal 7. Let's all get together and build a proper media management system for Drupal 8. So what they essentially did is they looked at the way Media Module was handling things and they re-architected it into smaller components, into smaller modules, okay? But does this mean that there, will be, that there won't be a Drupal 8 version of media? Well, no, there will, there will be a Drupal 8 version of media, but the media module in Drupal 8 is just a collection of configuration, and that's it. So the goal for media eventually in Drupal 8 is that you download media module, and then you download its dependencies, and you install it, and you have media management functionality out of the box pretty much. I would love for that day to happen because as you will see in the demo, setting up media, media management takes a bit, of config, a bit of configuration, but I would love for that. Um, I would love for a day where you can just install it and be done with it. So, how did they break it out? Well, there's three modules, as I was, as I was mentioning in the beginning. You first have a, a media entity, and media entity is used to store, to store assets, okay? But the media entity module doesn't really do much. It just offers a base entity. If you wanna add in extra functionality, so if you wanna handle images, if you wanna handle audio, documents, even Twitter posts, you need to download these provider modules, okay? So if you wanna handle images, you'll then need to download the media entity image module. If you wanna handle, um, if you wanna embed YouTube videos, you will then have to download the video embed field, okay? Or if you wanna handle documents, then you, or like PDFs, you'll need to download the media entity document, okay? Then you have Entity Embed. Now, Entity Embed allows you to create a button that lets you embed entities. But don't, get, but don't think this is just for media entities. It can be used to embed any type of entity, content types, users. You could even set it up where um, editors can embed, say, a course content type into the editor, which I think is great, because I've had this um, exact requirement a couple years ago. And... Um, it would have been great. Uh, no, this was Drupal 6 days um, if I had this module. Now, Entity Embed is available for Drupal 7, um, but it works brilliantly for Drupal 8. And when you, and also, I forgot to mention, when you embed an entity, it, it adds in an extra tag. So it uses this Drupal, Drupal dash entity tag and then embeds that into your content. And then the module has a filter that goes through your content, searches for the tags, and then simply replaces them with a, with a rendered entity. And then finally, you have Entity Browser. And this allows you to create a browser where you can browse for media assets, select them, and embed them. So often you would use Entity Browser with Entity Embed, but you can use Entity Browser with other modules such as uh, inline entity form. I won't really cover that in this uh, webinar because that's, that's a whole other set of functionality, but I could look at writing a tutorial about that on Webwash. So what are the, what are, so what are the required modules to get started, okay? Now, my definition of media management, because everyone has their own definition, okay? My definition is that 
as an editor, I want the ability to store assets. So I want to be able to upload a video. Oh, sorry, I want to be able to add a YouTube video and also upload images. I then want to be able to browse those assets, select them, and then embed them into an editor. Okay, so to achieve that, you really just need eight modules. And believe me, when I actually started researching this, I spent about five hours just sifting through all the modules because there are a lot of modules for media management in Drupal 8. And so I actually end up spending a lot of time just trying to figure out the main, the, the base modules. And I discovered that there's really eight modules. Okay, you have media entity. Okay, makes sense. We've covered that. You have media entity image. You have video embed field. You have entity um, module which is really used as a dependency. So you don't really touch it, it's just there for media entity. Then you have embed. Now embed um, is a dependency for entity embed. So entity is just behind the scenes, it's just a framework for embedding items into the editor. And then you have entity browser, and then you have C tools, which is a soft dependency. And what I mean by that, it's a soft dependency for entity browser where you, where you can install entity browser but if you want to create entity browsers, you need the C tools module for it. <clears throat> so now it's demo time. That's all the slides. There's only one more slide at the end for questions, but that's about it. Now we're going to jump into uh, demo. So let me open up my Drupal 8 site. So I've gone in and um, rebuilt the site. And the only thing I've done is created a test article and that's it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create functionality to store assets. So the first thing we'll do is go into extend and then search for media and we will install media entity, media entity image and media, sorry, video embed media. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, should, shouldn't we be using media, sorry, video embed field? Well. Video Embed Media is a sub-module of Video Embed Field and it offers integration between Video Embed Field with media entities. Yeah, So just enable that and then click on Install. And then it's going to go off and install its dependencies and just give it a second while it clears all, all of its caches. Okay, so, all right. So now we've installed the required modules. Go to structure, and then you'll get this new option called media bundles. And here we need to create our actual media bundles, the same way as you would create your content types. So media bundles are essentially just content types. Okay, similar concept. So if we want to handle video or images, we would create an uh, image uh, media bundle. So what I'll do is I'll create an image one first. Um, in the label, I'll add in image used for images. And from this drop down, I'll select image. And these uh, providers are provided by the media entity image module. Okay. And then take note of this field with source information. So the media entity bundle doesn't store the actual file. We still need to create an image field that will be used to store the file. And then here, with this field, we simply tell media entity, yep, our image is stored in this field, and go grab all the, you know, you can grab the image from this field. So we still need to map things across. But luckily for us, we can create this entity bundle, create the image field, come back, come back and map it again. And that's essentially what, what we will do. So let's just create this media bundle and then go to manage fields and we just create an image field, a stock standard image field. And so let me just quickly go in there and do that. There's nothing ground, ground, uh, groundbreaking here. Let's um, make it a required field and click on save settings. And so if we go back to 
the media bundle, you'll see that image has been selected, which is perfect. And let's just click on save bundle. Another thing which I'll mention, and this is pretty cool, uh, is this field mapping. So the image provider offers metadata. And essentially what we can do, if we want to store the width and height of the uploaded image, all we need to do is create a field to store the width and height, let's just say a text field, and then come here and select the fields that we have created and map them across. And this means that when somebody uploads an image, the width and height will be extracted out of the file and then mapped across to the field. So you can essentially store the width and height on the media bundle, which I, which I think is pretty cool. And depending on the provider, you do get a list of different metadata. And when we set up the video embed field, you will see that we will get a list of other, other options, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so we've created our image bundle. Let's create our video embed bundle. And I'll call this video embed because, it's not, because, because we're not handling videos locally. It's just for embeddable videos such as Vimeo and YouTube. So I'll just call this use for embedding video. Ugh, videos can't spell. And I'll select video embed field. But remember how we installed the video embed media module. Well, the maintainers have um, done a great little thing for us. They will create a field when this bundle is created. So that just saves us from having to create the field, come back and map it again. And so you can see that here, a, vid a video embed field will be created on this media bundle when you save this form, which is great. It saves us, you know, three extra clicks. And as I was mentioning here with the field mapping, you have other items as well, other metadata specific to this uh, type of provider that you can map across if you like. So let's just save that. And you'll see if we go into manage fields, we have this video embed field, which is great. Okay, so we've created our bundles. Let's create actual assets. And the way, one of the many ways you can do that is by Right, let me just make sure. Media entity da, 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 is all saved. Yep. Now, one of the ways you can do that is by clicking on a media tab right here, but it is not there. Of course, live demos never work. Let me just run Drush Cache Rebuild. Sometimes you may have to rebuild the site cache just to move things along. And let's see if it's if it pops up there. Okay, there you go. So if something doesn't appear, again, you know, just rebuild the site cache, rebuild the site cache. Oh, Drupal. Um, mind you, I never had to do this in my three other practices of this webinar. Of course, when this, when when it's live, it, it breaks. Anyway, so when you install media in uh, media entity, sorry, you will get this new view. Okay, called media, and from here you can. You can view all of your media entities and you can create them, okay? And what I'll do is I'll just create a test image one and also an embed, an, um, a video embed one. So what I'll do is just create an image one. I'll call this the Drupal icon because I'm using the Drupal icon. And I've got a image here. Drupal icon, now click on save and publish. All right, you can see that our image is there. Let's go back into content, media, and I will add in, this was, this video is, is webinar about page manager. Let me just grab that YouTube URL. And I'll pop it in. And this video is the video from last week's webinar. Okay, perfect. So from here, we can manage uh, our our assets. We can filter by the provider type. Essentially, this is like an image, you know, like a um, the specific 
the specific providers, and we also get some, some bulk operations. So at this point, we've looked at creating assets and we've looked at um, creating, creating bundles. Now let's look at embedding entities, okay? So to do that, let's go back to extend and I'll search for embed and I'll just enable the entity embed module. And when we install it, it will also install the embed uh, module because it's set as a, as a dependency. Okay. So to create your entity embed button, come to configuration, then content, edit, uh, content editor embed buttons. And from here, you can manage existing buttons and create new ones. By default, uh, the module creates this button to embed nodes, okay? So you, can, so you can play around with it and play around with this one. But in our case, we need to create a new one because this one only embeds node entities. We need, we need to create a button that embeds media entities. So just click on, what was that? Add embed button. We'll call this media, select entity from the dropdown and then entity type, select media. Leave all of these unchecked so that they are all available and just upload a, an icon and I'll use this one from the actual media module because I'll show you why. If you don't upload an icon, it uses this default eye and it can be a bit confusing when you're trying to add the button to the active toolbar when you have two icons that look the same. So just grab this one from the media uh, module and I've got a link to this particular icon uh, in the tutorial. So now let's go back to content authoring and and now we need to add the button to a text format and we also need to tweak the text format. So click on text formats and and I'll set this up on the basic HTML text format. Now if you are setting this up on a live site and you allow authenticated users, you may not want to do this on the basic HTML text format. You may want to create a new one just for editors, okay? Um, because you don't want to allow just normal unknown authenticated users to embed uh, buttons, uh, sorry, to embed assets into any, any page. But just for simplicity, I'm going to use basic HTML. So I'll just configure that. <clears throat> and here you can see our buttons. And, and you could see why having the same default icon can be a bit confusing. So what I'll do is I'll move this to, sometimes it doesn't pop. Oh, there we go. All right, so I've, I've added our button to our active toolbar. <coughs> and one of the important things you need to make sure is in the allowed HTML tags, when you add the button to the active uh, toolbar, it'll automatically add in this, uh, these tags and attributes. So this means that Drupal will allow these, these tags. And this is important because if you don't add this in and when you embed assets, Drupal will just sanitize it, wipe it away, and you'll be bang, banging your head against the wall trying to figure out why the hell isn't this working. So this is important. Make sure it's in there. And if you are trying to debug any type of, type of issue, come here and make sure um, these, uh, this, this tag is in allowed HTML tags. And don't just untick this and be like, yep, you know, problem solved because you're opening up yourself to massive security vulnerability if you, if you untick this filter. So the next thing we need to do is also uh, click on display embedded entities. Now, again, this is, this is, uh, the, this is the next required Thing, so required thing number two. Um, if this isn't there, well then your entities will not get rendered at all. And you will just see these, these tags. But a funny thing I noticed is that when we enable this, it throws the filter right to the bottom, but you really want it just below allowed, uh, limit allowed HTML tags. But if you save it, it then pops, pop, pops it back to the second place. So as you can see, it's right there. 
So just be aware of that. And another thing you have to make sure, and I, and I read this in the Entity Embed README, if you're using Align Images and Caption Images, make sure Caption Images is below Align Images. Okay? So let's just leave the text format for now and let's, let's embed a media asset into a test page. So if we go to Content, and click on edit. And I'll just pop it in here. I can click on this entity embed button. And I have to search for the asset by searching for the media name. And I'll click on next. And from this uh, display as, just click on thumbnail. You can click on different image styles. I'll just leave that none for now. And I'll just give it a left. And you can see that our big button, because there's no image style, in there has been uh, added in. And if we double click on it, we can edit it. But let's just click on that and click on save and published. Okay, so we have, so we've embedded our first image. Everything's great. Now let's change it so that it's using an image style. Okay. Notice how we have an X here, red X. And, it, and if we hover over it, you get a little message, I don't know if you guys can see it, which says, this image has been removed for security, for security reasons, only images from the local domain are allowed. Now, what has happened? Well, there's actually a, it's a bug, I'll call it a bug, with one of the filters and image styles. So what we, what we need to do is if you go back into configuration, text formats, and let's go back to basic HTML, <clears throat> this restrict images to this site doesn't work if you are pointing to an image uh, style. And what this filter does is that it stops people from, from, adding, from adding images that are pointing to a remote site. So let's just say we're setting this up on drupal.org and somebody um, adds an image and, and they are pointing it to google.com slash such and such, well, it'll, it'll stop, stop the image from being displayed because images can only be displayed from the local site. But unfortunately, there's this bug with image styles. Now, the workaround round for it is to just disable the filter. But if you are using this filter for its specific purpose, you may not want to do that. So again, just think about it. Um, just think about disabling it. But unfortunately, the workaround for now is just to disable it. So I'll just disable it and click on save configuration. And if we go back in to edit, let's resize it to medium. And I'll also put in a caption. Why not? People love captions. And you can see that our image has been resized and it's actually displayed and we have the caption. And if we click on save and keep published, we have our asset, which is great. It could do with a bit of styling, you know, remove the padding on the side. But anyway, it's there, it's embedded, and um, editors can use it. Another cool thing which I'll show you is it works with quick edit. Amazing. Um, if I was to, so let's just remove that. And I can click on the button from there and I'll, I'll add, in a, add in the asset again. Go left, give it a thumbnail size. Let's just give it a small. And we can embed it in. And we can even move it around, which is pretty cool. So you can use the quick edit to embed items. I think editors will go crazy about this. Um, it is pretty cool. And then when you save it, you can save it, which is amazing. Okay, let's now embed a video. Okay, let me just remove this and I'll click on this button again. And what was it called? It's called webinar, I think. Yeah, okay. Now, you may have noticed that we can only embed the video as a thumbnail. So let's just do this and see what happens. <clears throat> All right, it's displaying a caption, it's displaying a thumbnail, but what if you wanted to embed the actual player, the embedded player? Because if I was an editor, I would assume that I can embed a video 
and embed it as a player. Like, yes, you may want to sometimes just display a thumbnail, but how can you get media entity to embed the asset with the player? Well, we need to do a bit extra, you know, a bit of extra work for that. And what we need to do is we need to create a custom view mode for it. So let's do that now. So to create a custom view mode, just go to structure, uh, display modes, and then view modes. And just a heads up, you won't see media in here. And there's an actual issue for it uh, uh, in the media entity. Because when I was trying to set things up, I was a bit confused because normally your, all your entities appear here, but it's not here. So just click on view add, um, add view mode and you'll see that media is here. And what I'll do is I'll call this one embed and click on save. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that now there's a view mode to be displayed and then you see media. So for people who don't know, view modes allow, allow you to display an entity based off a particular context. Um, so content types or the content entity utilizes view modes a lot. And you can see here that out of the box, you get a full content view mode, you get a teaser view mode, you get a view mode for RSS feeds. And essentially what that allows you to do is if you want to display a list, a list of teasers, um, well, you would then set up a view that lists out all articles using the teaser view mode. Or um, in the RSS feed, it'll load up all articles using the RSS view mode. And then you can see here with other entities, you have um, one view mode for, for say, custom block, comments, and then the user entity has two ways of rendering a user using the compact view mode and also the user accounts. But our one here, it embed will just be used for our video, for the video embed media bundle. So now that we've created our view mode, let's, let's configure it. So let's go back to media bundle and then manage display and make sure you click on custom display settings and just click on embed. So this will enable the embed field and then on the top left, you'll see this embed button here. Let's remove everything other than video URL and we'll remove the label. And this video formatter handles um, the embeddable player. So make sure this is set to video format, to the video format, not thumbnail. <coughs> okay, so that's been configured. And now if we go back to edit, let's go edit our, oh, didn't save it. And let's just, embed the video back in. Now, our embed view mode isn't displayed here. Why is that? Well, it's because we need to rebuild the site cache. So that's another thing, be aware of that. If something doesn't appear and you think it should appear, but then it's kind of like, how do you know? Well, you don't know what you don't know. So yeah, this is just a top tip. Rebuild the site cache and then re refresh the page. And then if we go here, let's type in webinar again, go next, you'll see embed is there, which is great. And let's just embed that in and you get a nice, you get an actual player, which is great. And then if we click on save and keep published, we get our test article with our embedded player, which is Great. Okay, so, so far we've looked at managing assets, creating assets, creating media bundles. We've looked at um, embedding media assets. Now let's look at entity browser because let's go back to our edit page and remember how we chose a media entity. Now using an autocomplete field is not the best experience. I know if I was an editor, there's no way I will remember every single media name. So this, this autocomplete field, yes, it's a good workaround for now, but it'll be better to set up a proper um, media browser view that editors can see, can filter, can then select an asset and then embed it. 
So let's do that now. So let's go back into extend and install another module. Let's type in browser, install entity browser, and we'll also install ctools. And then just click on install. And then give it a second. Okay. Then if we go to configuration, you have this new option called entity browsers. And from here, you can configure your browsers. But configuring a browser requires three steps. You first need to create a view that'll be used for the entity browser. So when an editor sees all the assets, that is essentially a view. So we first need to do that. Then we need to create an actual entity browser item or entity browser, whatever you want to call it, okay? That's the second step. Then we need to configure entity embed to use the created entity browser that we create in this step, not the view, all right? I hope I haven't confused you, but there's really three steps. And this, this part was the part that I kind of struggled with because there's a lot of configuration. And let me just show you, okay? Um, so as I mentioned, the first thing we need to do is to create a view because, rem because remember, in Drupal, everything's a view now. Because views is in core, everything's a view. These pages, this content page is a view. This media page is a view. <laughs> these comment pages, these are views. Okay, everything's a view. So to create a view, go to structure, views, and then click on add view. And I'll call this asset browser because if we use entity browser for everything, it's gonna get way too confusing. Um, and from the show dropdown, select media of, all ty of type all, that's fine, and then sort by newest first. Leave this page setting and block settings unticked and click on save and edit. Now, there are a few mandatory steps you need to accomplish here. The same way as you had to for media embed. So the first thing you need to do is from displays, click on add and make sure you select entity browser. This is very important, okay? Because when you select the view in the next step, when you're creating the actual entity browser, the dropdown will only list out views which use the entity browser um, uh, display. So this is very important. So just select that. And the next, the next thing we'll do is adding two extra fields. The first one is a thumbnail, so we can see what we are embedding. So let me just set a thumbnail. And here you can see a little example of what the editor will see when they select an item. So we have the uh, media name there, great, Drupal icon, and then we have the uh, image. And the next mandatory thing that you need to do is adding, well, sorry, what's it called, form, is adding this field. So Entity Browser implements a custom field for views called Entity Browser Bulk Select Form. Okay, let's just add this in, and I'll show you what it means. What it does, it adds in a checkbox, which is then used to select an item and then embed it. This is required. I don't think um, you can even in, uh, select a view and add it to an uh, to an entity browser because you will get a message saying that your view needs to have this field. So this is a mandatory step. And the final thing we'll do is just clean this view up because it looks pretty terrible. And let's just change it to a table. And yeah, just click on apply there. And let, let's just reorder things. So it's bulk form first, thumbnail, and then media name. So this is a bit cleaner. And let's just click on save. Okay, so we have created our view. And again, two important things you need, you need to do here. Make sure entity browser has been selected as the display and that you've added an entity browser select form. Important. And let's just click on save for one last time because you'll be surprised how many times I forget to click on save. And then I'll, re then, I'll, then I'll spend half an hour trying to debug things. Let's go back to configuration and create our entity browser. Now this step was confusing at first for me because as you can see, there's a lot of options here. 
you know, display plugin, iframe, modal, standalone form, you know, what do I select? How do I start with this? So I'm going to show you how to configure this my way and, and the simplest way. Okay. Now there are a bunch of modules out there that ship pre-built entity browsers, like uh, entity browser configuration. You have content browser, you even have entity browser enhanced, you have or probably some other one, like a file browser. And that's why when I was researching this, it was hard to kind of um, weed out which modules are just kind of configuration modules and which modules are the actual main base modules. So again, this is, this is my way of creating an entity browser. But if you do know of a module that helps you create awesome browsers, then just let me know. And there are a few of them, but it's always good to know how to build things from scratch because when you have to debug, um, a broken entity browser that's implemented by, by some other module, then you haven't really been exposed to the inner workings of the module and it will take you even longer to debug things. So this helps us get under the bonnet and figure things out. So let me just change this to asset browser. I'll just call this asset browser as well. And select iframe from display plug plugin. There is a compatibility issue with using modal with entity, um, with embed entity or entity embed. So be aware of that and then just leave the widget selector as tabs. Selection display plugin, I just left that as no selection display. <clears throat> and just click on next. Um, make sure you check the auto open entity browser. <clears throat> this, will, this will save an editor from having to um, press one extra button, believe it or not. So this will automatically open up the entity browser instead of them pressing the embed button and then having to press on a link which says select entities and then having to press then another button to open up the browser. <clears throat> because you know, we're all about making life easier for editors. And then just click on next for that. Just click on next for that. There's nothing there. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is let's allow editors to upload images. <clears throat> and we do that by adding in this upload image widget plugin. And I'll call this upload images. And the other the other widget which I'll put in is the actual view of the of the entities, of the media entities. So I'll call that view. And most important, I'll select the 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 view which we created. Now again, if if you can't see your view from this drop down, make sure you've selected entity browser as the display. And then just click on finish. Okay, so we've completed the first two steps. The final step is now attaching this entity browser to the entity embed button. So go to content authoring, um, embedder buttons, click on edit, and you'll get these, this new option down here. Let's select our entity browser. Now this is the entity browser, not the view. Again, should have possibly named it a bit different, but anyway, that's entity browser. Oh, sorry, asset browser. We've attached that to the embed button and that's it, okay? So now if we go to content and edit, let's just remove this. Let's see if we need to rebuild the site cache for some weird reason. We click on the button, which is great. Let me just move this to the side and we can upload an image from here, which is great. And then we can view our assets, select them, and then we can embed them in. Okay. Now, one thing, uh, one thing I did struggle with, and I don't have the answer for it, and if you know, let me know. I couldn't figure out a way to add YouTube videos directly from here. So there is no widget plugin to add in URLs. Mind you, I, I only spent about half an hour trying to figure it out. But if we go into Entity Browser, Edit, and then go to Widgets, I couldn't find an option to upload. Like this, this upload doesn't really allow you to upload. So... If somebody knows the solution, just add a comment to the um, tutorial 
and let me know. Because I'm sure there, I'm sure with a bit of custom code, you can add it in. <clears throat> There's no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't figure out a clean way of doing that. And finally, the last thing I'll show you is uh, the permission system. Um, so let's go back, let's go into permissions. If you enable media entity, the, the module won't assign any permissions. So if you wanna allow anonymous users to see the media assets, you have to check this view media for anonymous users or, and also authenticated users as well. So that's something that um, just, just to be aware of. So if you're testing everything out, of course, using the admin accounts, and then you're ready to go and you upload this to a site and realize, oh, why can't anonymous users see it? Well, that's because. Um, because you need to assign view media to anonymous uh, users. Okay, well, whew, it's a lot of configuration. Um, I think that's it. So the next, so any questions? Let me bring down the chat. So any questions? Okay. So thanks everyone for sticking around. Hope you learned a lot. I will be performing this um, presentation at the Drupal meetup tonight, but I think it's going to be a cut down version because I've only got 20 minutes to talk. But most presentations go on for about double the time. So any questions about media management um, in general? Okay, there was a question sent by email. Let me just check that out. <coughs> okay. All right, I'm interested in learning how to configure the options that are presented um, during, for example, depend, uh, depending on the media implementation. Okay, for example, depending on the media implementation, when embedding an image, there are options presented for selecting display as um, image style alt text. Without going into detail about configuration required for each of these specific things, could you explain where to find the configuration for choosing what options are presented to the user at this step? Absolutely. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. Um, let's go back into the browser. Oh, thank you, John. Love your work. Thank you. Um, let's go and share. So you can configure that, that stuff. Um, let me share my screen. Where is this stuff? Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. Go back to configuration. Uh, embed buttons. So I assume you are talking about, let me just quickly, so we're on the same page. You want to configure what's displayed from this drop down, okay? And yeah, you can configure that. <coughs> so if you go into, oh well, no, sorry. Configuration, embed buttons, edit. <coughs> it's these options here. So allowed entity embed display plugins. So by default, if none are selected or are displayed, but let's just say you want to allow embed and thumbnail. And you click on save. And, what? Well, clicked on the wrong button. And let's go back to content, edit. Let's see if you need to clear, rebuild the site cache. Oh no, you don't, okay. So yeah, that's how you, that's how you control them, okay? Um, and my understanding, now I may not be 100% correct, but my understanding is that these options, so if we go back to these options, from a developer standpoint, these should be actual plugins. So if for some reason, a custom view mode just doesn't cut it, and you need to put in some custom, you need to write some custom code, because remember, the thumbnail display display plugin isn't a view mode, it is a bit of custom code because you have those extra options. So you may want to, especially for a massive project, you may want to create a custom display display plugin that has extra options. Well then you can do that using custom code. Um, or the simplest option is to just use um, a view mode. All right, I hope that answers your questions. Any other questions? Let me bring this down, bring up the chat. 
All right, can you upload um, multiple? Okay, so I've got another from Sebastian. Can you upload multiple images out of the box? Yes, you can. And this is something something that I really didn't cover in the tutorial because the tutorial was already two and a half thousand words long. And normally I don't write tutorials that long because they are a pain to write. You know, they're, they're huge. And I will possibly write a few a few more tutorials about media management and just go in into more um, depth about certain topics of it. But you can use, and if you want to upload multiple uh, images, what I recommend is use DropZone.js, I think. Yes, so, drop, drop, so DropZone.js is a JavaScript library that allows you to drag and drop elements, okay? And best of all, there is integration. There is a, there is a Drupal 8 version and there is a Drupal module for it. So what you could do is um, set it up and then, and then in your entity browser, it should be available. It should be available as a widget plugin in your entity browser, which then you can then just uh, drop in. So there is support for it. What I recommend you also do, and I did add this to the tutorial, I think. No, I did, I did add links to the tutorial. You do have a few pre-built entity browsers. And as I was mentioning, these modules just offer a built entity browser out of the box. So it really ships a bit of configuration and a bit of custom code to kind of glue everything, everything together. But have a look at it. Um, you have this media entity browser, entity browser enhanced content browser. You have all of these um, modules that offer some type of uh, functionality. Okay, so have a look at it. If I was setting this up on a proper, proper Drupal 8 site, I would use DropZone JS for it. So I would use this, this for it, where you can just click and drag, because I've used other CMSs that allow you to drag and drop elements, and it is a, uh, the function the functionality just saves you a lot of time if you are taking screenshots and quit and 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 you just want to drag um, screenshots as you are writing things instead of saving it onto the local file system and then selecting it trying to find it you just it just it just removes um, it just removes that tension of just you know having to search for things so drag and drop is a must and drop zone js is a massive project you know Based off the stars on GitHub, there's 11,000 stars. That's not a real good indication of popularity. Well, it kind of is, but um, that's a good way to see popularity. Okay, we have another question. Okay, just a question here. Um, will we be able to review this uh, webcast after it concludes? If so, will it be available fairly soon? Um, so... Uh, Yes, I will create a um, blog post on webwash.net and this will be uploaded to YouTube. How quick would it be? Well, I first need to uh, give me, you know, 24 hours, hopefully tomorrow. By this time tomorrow, it will be online because I do need to do a bit of post-production because I'm recording the audio, so the audio is better quality and I need to kind of add that to the video. But then last week I discovered that the pace of the video kind of got out of sync halfway. Um, <clears throat> okay, do you think there will be a problem migrating from this sort of media solution to the core initiative that's being worked on? Um, okay, so oh, that's something that I, that I did not mention and I'm terribly sorry about that. Yes, good question. Thank you, Eric. Um, so for Drupal 8.3, okay, which is scheduled to be released, um, there was a date actually... There was a date mentioned um, uh, yesterday, I saw. Come on, Drupal.org, load up. Uh, I think it was March or April. Da, da, da. Where is this? Um, uh, there, was, there was a date mentioned. Anyway, there was a date mentioned that Drupal 8.3 will be released March, April, and there was a specific date. Now, some of the functionality, um, as I'm as I should have mentioned, but I've also written about this in the tutorial, um, there is a media module, uh, sorry, a media initiative to get a lot of this stuff into Drupal core, which is amazing. I've always thought Drupal core needed to handle this because this is such an important part. Now, 
The question is, um, will you be able to migrate? I don't know. That's a short answer. And this isn't the first time where, um, where this has happened, where you have a contrib module being moved into core and then having to deal with these migration questions. A similar question for this is um, with the content moderation and um, the content moderation and what is a workbench moderation. So a lot of what workbench moderation did has gone into Drupal core and I've heard that there will be um, an upgrade for that. I'm sure there will be content upgrade, but you, I really don't know. I mean, unfortunately, I really don't know the answer to that. Um, if there, I mean, you know, the only workaround really is to write a bit of migration code to migrate things across, which which sucks. I I agree, but I'm I'm sure there will be migrate support. But as far as I know, there will only be a little bit of um, there will only be a little bit of media stuff going into eight point three if it lands. So the media initiative stuff. I mean, eight point eight point three is going to land for sure. There's been dates set, but um, I think the media team is frantically working to get to get some low low level APIs in core, and then over the next rele few releases, so 8.3, you know, 8.4, you're going to get more and more funct functionality. I do honestly hope for the day where I can just install Drupal 8 and have drag and drop functionality out of the box. That's one thing I really hope for. Okay, so any other questions? Now, just to also um, um, mention about how how quickly this video will go up. I I will send an email to everyone who's uh, registered for this webinar, so you will get an email just mentioning um, that the webinar is available. We can just watch it off YouTube, okay? And um, I'll, I'll also link to the actual tutorial as well, because sometimes it's good to just have an actual page where you can search for things, because you can't search with video. Okay, I think time-wise we're Perfect, 58 minutes or something, good. All right, any other questions? All right, well, okay, is there anything else? No, okay. Okay, quick question about image uploads out of the box, stock, are there any, are they stored as media entities? Ah, good question. No, okay, um, so the question is, at uh, the stock, um, image uploading, are they stored as entities? Let me show you. So when I, I remember in 2014 seeing this demoed and I was like, oh sweet, we can upload images. What actually happens to the back end? Okay, so if I go here and I use this image button and I click on images, now to be fair, this works pretty well. So if you need basic functionality, can you even resize it? No, you can't. Okay, no, you can't. Okay. Caption and then the anti-caption. Okay. So right now I'm just using the stock standard um, image capabilities of Drupal Core. Okay. Now what this does is this doesn't create a media entity. It creates a file. Okay. And... The file system is separate to the media um, entity. If I'm corrected, okay, oh, no, no, no. Files are entities themselves, but I don't think they are fieldable. You know, um, I may be wrong, but this, but yeah, images uploaded through the editor using the standard functionality are just treated as files. But the problem you had in Drupal 7 when you did things this way through the file system is that, all right, let's have a quick look at here. Can you, all right, let me, let, let me just finish my thought before I jump onto other questions. So one issue that you had with, um, with uh, the, the, the file system and especially the managed file system in Drupal 7 is that if the image wasn't being used, so see here, used in, it actually tracks the usage. If it wasn't used, it'll automatically delete the file randomly at, a, at some magical cron time, it will just delete it because it's not being used. But I think, it's, I think this for Drupal 7 has changed because the status is set to permanent. 
And then if we go to, let's open up um, SQL Pro and be a bit nerdy about this. So where is it? Demo, 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 demo. You will see that there is a table in there called manage files and you'll see that the files are stored in there. So any type of um, file that's added to the file system is stored in there. Now you may ask, well, why are these images, okay, in there? So this is the uh, this is actually the other the image that we uploaded for the media entity, and this is a thumbnail version of the YouTube video. Well, the media entity still had to download those thumbnails and store them using Drupal's file system, and that's why they are still treated as files. Um, and then you can and then you can track all the um, the files in here, and then you can also track the usage from the file usage table. All right, another few more questions. Okay, can you resize by drag and dropping the lower corner? Um, I'm not sure, maybe. So can you resize it by just clicking and dragging? No. Oh, you can, okay, all right, sweet, you can. With that way, let's test that out. That's a good question. Let's test that out with this one. But it's not obvious though, that's a thing. Let's test this out. Uh, uh, oh, interesting. See, even I learn new things. Oh, great. Okay, so you can't do it with the standard um, entity embed, but you can do it this way. No, that kind of, hmm, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay. So no, well, you can do it if you upload it using the standard um, um, file. So the um, file, uh, the image button using CK Editor, but you can't do it with other entities. Uh, when viewing source after inserting. Okay, is there an attribute? Uh, yes, so let's just have a look at that. So what does the embed code look like when you embed it? It looks like this. Let me just zoom that in. Oh. So it looks like this, and you do have a UUID in there. So you can tweak this by hand if you were, if you really want to be <laughs> difficult and just change things yourself and um, yeah, tweak it. So you can, so everything does have a UUID and it's all in there. <clears throat> so let me just quickly go through these videos. <clears throat> so yes, um, so just a final thing, um, yes, it creates a file entity, but media entity is a different type of entity. That is uh, correct. But another thing to think of is that the file entity needs, well, sorry, let me start again. The file entity works by having a physical file on the file system. A media entity can be anything. And remember, we created a video embed um, media bundle for videos that doesn't have a physical file, it just has a URL. So that's, so that's one thing that I like about media, the media entity module, because the media module in Drupal 7 required, um, what was it, file entity module? So it only worked with files, with, with files on the file system. You really couldn't do any type of um, videos. Oh, could you do videos? I don't know, I can't, I can't remember. But I do know when they were discussing this whole new media initiative, one of the things that they were discussing is trying to figure out is, well, what constitutes a media object? Is it attached to a file? Isn't it attached to a file? Because a media, you know, a media entity can be anything. You could, you could have a set of media assets for a particular project that doesn't, doesn't use a file. Okay, so it can be whatever you want. You know, Drupal can be whatever you want, whatever you configure it. And I think they've made the right choice by um, not, n not depending on actual files. <clears throat>